right, we'll be on the map very shortly. As you can see, it will be Ohana Bomber versus the one and only Slivko. It's going to be a good one, there's no question. Ohana's a great map to start us off. Expect to see a lot of aggression coming right out of the gate here from Bomber. That's right, we'll see once we get into this game. We're now finally in. Let's do it. Good things come to those who wait, ladies and gentlemen, and your patience is appreciated because here we are on Ohana and in the southeast position in the Red Trunks playing Terran. It is. Yeah. Startail Bomber. Bomber having built up a rather substantial foreign fan base with some great performances. Most recently, of course, Lone Star Clash 2, where he took it to the final map in a best of eight. I think that's, generally speaking, that just doesn't happen, but it was, in fact, best of eight, best of five, followed by best of three, final map against, indeed, a Zerg opponent. And now he must face another foreign hope from the Zerg faction. So in the northwest position, in the blue trunks playing Zerg, I bring you... Virtus Pro Slipco. All right, well, let's see what Slipco can bring to the table here. Of course, from Russia. Let's see what he can do. Recently joining his new team, Virtus Pro, not so long ago, about a couple of months back. Uh, two months, two or three months back, he joined them. And he's been performing very well as of recent. As mentioned, he managed to get quite deep in the Intel Extreme Masters tournament held just a few days ago. He did. Well, last weekend. It really is just a few days ago as it is Thursday here. As we do have Patchy first coming down by Slivko. There's uh, some of Bomber's results most recently. Impressive, honestly, when you look at it. Round of four of the fall championship, very impressive. MLG Rally Champion 2011. I feel like Bomber, Bomber's really been kind of around forever in StarCraft yeah. 2 and was known as a really, really great player initially. And then he had a little bit of a fall off where he wasn't really showing results. And then. There's a sneaky little dodge right there. Oh, looking for the interception, but he fakes him out, goes into the base. And then he he's come back in the last few months to actually be putting on these amazing performances that yeah. very much they're very much very much reminiscent of the bomber of old, I feel. It's almost like he can play his classic style now because the metagame has shifted to the point where that now works again. That's right. I mean, in 2011, the start of 2011, he was one of the best Terrans, but throughout that year, he dropped off. And as you can see, it took him a long time until 2012, the full championship, which is only a couple of months back, where he basically destroyed every single Protoss in his way. Easy peasy. His Terran versus Zerg was looking sharp, and he's always had a decent Terran versus Terran as well. And he is getting the same results as we used to see. But can he do it against an opponent who's taken quite a considerable early gas? Doesn't necessarily mean anything. Because uh, if you think the, the biggest example would be Terran versus Protoss. When they wore off with a barracks supply depot, supply depot, you know, it doesn't really mean anything. But it could at the same yeah. time, which is what this early gas means. It doesn't necessarily mean that he's going to do it all in. It could just be for speed links and then, ex and then just take out of gas and continue to build drones. But at the same time... Bomber has to think about the option that could still be aggression. Yeah, there very well could be, and that would be unfortunate, certainly, considering he did go for the command center first, followed up by the two barracks, which you always need to try and catch up early on in the game. If you don't have that, then it's very easy just to overwhelm a player that's done that in the very early game. Indeed, Bomber is actively scouting everywhere he possibly can, keeping it out. So far, nothing from Slivko as of yet, focusing on his economy. Yeah, he is still mining gas from all three yeah, though, he is. so we'll that's see true. what that's going to develop into as we have a couple of Marines down there. And what's this going to be? A third command center coming down. So Ooh. if aggression was to come, it's going to be hard to hold. Well, but we'll see as a, another supply depot does come down here, making that wall off. A lot of drones in production though. Yeah, big round of 10 drones and then 11, in fact, doesn't seem to indicate he wants to throw anything in just yet. But what is this gas for? That's the question we always have to ask. He's uh, passed the critical 100 point. We have a Roach Warren. That we do. There we go. So Roach Warren coming down with a second gas as well. Still doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be aggression, but it very well could be from here. Two gases powers quite a heavy amount of Roaches. And of course, a Bailing Nest could equally follow. Yep. The famous Roach Baneling all in is very, very dangerous, especially against a player that happens to be doing this economically focused build. And Bomber with the engineering block on the third here. 
And I have to wonder if that might, in fact, force that kind of action coming out. And it didn't look like he wanted to take another base yet anyway. His mineral count has got very, very high indeed. Let's see how many roaches he powers out. This will be telling. Well, six so far. And he's waiting. He's got a little gas banked up. All the way up to 11. There we go. That's more like it. As Slivko there building the roaches. 11. He doesn't have a bailing nest down yet. There, there it, is. it is. All right. So 100% confirmed now. Let's see how much damage you can do, because if you look at the follow-up, what's actually coming in, it, you know, it's not Cloak Banshees, it's not Hellions, it's just Marines. Yeah. So this is going to be very, very dangerous. This could actually just outright kill it could. Bomber. Yeah, and I, he does have a tech lab down, but he hasn't got any Marauders out as of yet to help deal with this. Tech oh, he scanned on the natural and sees it. He yeah. sees it. He must be aware now, and I would expect to see Marauders coming out. Three bunkers down immediately, but the question is, can he get this up in time? There's not a huge amount of roaches coming yet, but there will be. Those lings could become banelings and bust that down very quickly. He is on borrowed time. He is breaking down those back rocks, which actually is not a great idea here. That would give a lot of access to Slivko, which he shouldn't be giving him. These three bunkers are going to complete, I think, by the time the bailings get up there. There's going to be four bunkers, but one's going to go down immediately with a couple of Marines, and oh. is he going to be able to hold on? Because there's so many units coming. That's a lot of banelings coming in at one. Marauder is now on the field. The uh, bunkers are fully staffed, but this baneling hammer is ready to come down with a lot of roaches backing it up. What do we see? Do we see more units? Yes, we do. 26 more lings in production. Slivko is committed. He's added an extra drone on there, so he may decide to cut off this attack after the first push, but I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No, anymore. it seems unlikely. Not with that many Bane links. You just wouldn't. There's too much invested in this now for Slivko. It's all or nothing, because if he doesn't, there's three command center. There's plus one attack, the Stim, the Siege Tech. All of this is coming, so it's all or nothing for Slivko. He's building a massive amount of Bane to break this through, because if he doesn't do it, this game is as good as over. Yes, it is. His drone count is critically low already. He does have the option of going up the side, but he's going right up the front here, and here come the Bane links. Three pops, four pops already, looking for the optimal detonation. Two front bunkers down, but there are more to deal with. There goes down the bunker with the Marauders. The Roaches currently untouched. And uh-oh, coming in very close and a good hit. Needs a second good hit to really make this work here. Bailing count is starting to get a little bit low, but the Roach count is critically high at this stage. Enough to break this. Maybe, just maybe, that's one more bunker going down. He's even trying to escape with all of those SCVs here. Ah, uh, so he's, Bomber's going to give this up. He can't do it. He can't defend it. There's too many units here. He's trying to complete a wall. Siege Tech is so close to finishing, as we can see. Uh -oh. Seconds away. More he's banes. able to get tanks out. He could detonate the Bane Link. Yes, but he could. Stim is also nearly done, but I don't think it's going to be possible to defend this. Uh, we'll see if Bomber can actually pull that one off. He's going to need to bring in a lot of defense, everything he can get, and he needs a good target fire. A massive hit on the Bane Links. Can he get a second one? The bunker is not dead yet. The bunker still holds right now. Another Siege Tech. He might hold this. Bomber looking to hold, and he does it. He has held the first push here. Oh, wow. Nicely done. Perfect timing there by Bomber. Great target fire from the Siege Tanks. Detonates huge clumps of Banelings. And now Slivko forced to go back to droning. And this is really kind of grim for him. He does still have the lead in terms of drones, yeah. but that attack did not do as much as he'd hoped. Bomber survives somehow, some way, and immediately goes back to mining, because tanks, the, the aggression's over. There's no way these links and roaches Absolutely can do anything not. now with tanks out. So therefore, Bomber can easily mine, and can actually mine from his third base too, because yes. he knows his opponent's got to be droning. Therefore, yep. what units can do anything, as long as he bunny hops tanks down and spreads his marines out. Likewise, Bomber's going to mine from these three bases. And as mentioned, he has one plus one attack down. He has double engineering, but he has an armory on the way as well. Slivko's not in bad shape, though. He does have his 1-1 from his double evolution chamber. He does have his lair in a third hatchery on the way, but that was a clutch, clutch. <laughs> that was great. It really, really was. That was awesome to watch. And why is he just going to put his CC down there? He's going to take some damage. He's trying to draw them into range of the tank, I believe. But there we go. There's a hit coming in. But he wants to watch out there. Doesn't want to lose too much health on that command center. Would love to get it down at the moment. Hatchery is in the third here for, Sl for Slivko now. A lot of workers killed by Slivko. He did do significant economic damage. He now does have a good drone lead here, but he doesn't have his third up yet, and the third's about to come down. That means triple orbital, triple mules for Bomber. That's right, and he has plus two attack on the way. He's got a good upgrade lead over the Zerg. As the game starts to slow down quite a bit now, we won't see any movement out from Bomber for quite a while. He may poke to the Zalnaga Tower just to force some extra units out, but apart from that, he's not going to do anything for quite a while here which will allow Slivko to drone. He's at 64 at the moment, can continue to do so. 
the extra production finally coming in for Bomber, and he will actually want to get the medivacs out because he actually, I don't think he's got any right now. No, I he's believe got one. he had one. Yeah, I, I, I did see one wandering over, and in fact, I see on the minimap some movement. Ah, uh, yes, that is that is yep, a medivac. So he's going to go ahead and try to put a bit of pressure yeah, on. Spotted immediately. The question is, will we see a response here from Slivko? Well, he can respond, but he can't respond well because there's no Infestors out yet. So yeah. until the Infestors are out, this drop can do a lot, uh, which is obviously what we're seeing from Bomber or yeah. attempt attempting from Bomber. No breakdown on the rocks yet as well, which could give some opportunity here for Bomber to harass the third. It looks like he's going to go straight for the main initially, and this should be a pretty effective drop to begin with. Some drone kills coming in, forcing everything off the mineral line, and he's comboing with a push. This is classic Bomber. He'll be all over the map. He'll be pushing wherever he can, combining drops with very aggressive Marine tank play against the Zerg. He now takes his opponent's Zelnaga washed out, pushing towards the third here. Are the rocks down yet? Yes, it looks like they are. Nice placement of the creep there. Uh-oh, that could be a bunch of free banelings right there. That would not be a donation he wants to give, and he's thankfully able to get out just before that happens. Uh, Bomber's got to be very careful here, because all the infestors are about to pop, and all the forces from Slivko are probably more than enough to deal with this. Well, he pops all of the banelings here. The Marines now moving in position, but the tanks will most likely go down. The Marines taking some damage as well, and there's a drop, a good fungal right there just before the Infestor goes down and gives its life for the Swarm, and that's going to be a whole defense here for Slipko. Another great fungal here, and this is unfortunate here for Bomber. This is actually what lost him the final game in Lone Star Clash 2, was basically dying to fungal growth, and he's just taken significant damage from that. His aggression was blunted, which puts Slipko in a decent position, maybe just start droning again. Medivac count is only at one here. But that was, I mean, it wasn't bad for Bomber, though. Oh, I mean, no, he did destroy not. a lot. There's no fourth base down from the Zerg, which should have been taken by now. Mm -hmm. Bomber does have good upgrades, and he's moving out again. What we'll see from Bomber very shortly is a fourth base going down. He's going to keep the aggression up. Aggression, not just with units, but with his economy as well, to yeah. keep up the, the hyper movement as we're seeing across the map again. Another drop was loaded. And this army gonna fight the Infestors here. Has to be very careful there. If you can get some target fire on those Infestors, that would be wonderful. And no fungal growth available here. And what we've seen from Bomber in this matchup is he will very much send a small group of Marines out as a vanguard to try and bait fungals, to try and get information about where the Infestors are. Perhaps the most important thing, I see Bored Infestors going to the other side over there. And we also have this drop coming in from Bomber. Yeah, we do have this drop coming in. And... We'll see, there's actually so many borrowed bailings across the map, but we'll look at that in a moment. The drop is here, and there's nothing really to defend it at the moment as Bomber moves forward towards his third. Again, imagine if he was able to get towards the third with those units. That would be fantastic, and he's looking at a set of position here as well. He brings a lot of lings out of position. This will be the time to go in, sends his little vanguard of oh. Marines. It takes a queen out as well, which is wonderful, and if he overcommits here and gets hit by siege tank fire, this could be dangerous, but they're slightly out of range. And there's that fourth command center coming down at the background. But uh-oh, the Borrowed Banelings. This is what I talked about. This could be very, very deadly here for Bomber. But he oh, does see it. He so sees smart. It. He oh. knows. He knows all the time. He gets that scan. It picks off yet another one. There's one remaining here. Needs to be a little bit careful. But he is aware of the presence of Borrowed Banelings now. So with three orbital uh. commands, he's going to be able to scan. And now he's moving out with this double drop. Needs to avoid the Infestors, of course. Doesn't want to get fungled at this stage. Yeah, so we're going to see the double drop towards the main base again to pull Slipko back while the rest of the army moves and meets with those tanks on the high ground towards the third base. If Bomber pulls this off, oh, two Borrowed Banelings. Oh, ah, not close I can't enough. get good enough of a hit there and doesn't opt for it. But these tanks Tanks are under siege. Bomber needs to get all of his forces there. The two drops are going to do so much damage combined with this. Yeah, he absolutely does need that. Passes by the fourth base, but he's going to go straight for the main here. And it's the Infestors that really matter here. Can he get the spread? Good spread initially here from Bomber. Those fungals not really all that effective. Not doing huge amounts of damage. Here comes the double drop. Already picked up by Lynx here, but that should be enough Marines to break it. And it is moving towards the spawning pool now as the aggression comes towards the third. Those Infestors are draining energy very fast, and they're not effectively trading here. Yeah, Bomber's done it. GG. Gee, that is it. Slivko realizes there's no way out of this one. A great start here for our Terran hero. Yeah, looking, making things look easy here at IPL 5. Of course, top eight at IPL 4, looking to increase that at this tournament. And unfortunately for Slivko, as we saw in the previous set, when you dedicate to a big attack and it doesn't win you the game, you will play from behind. Yes, he you played from behind in this game. Bomber never let that go. And well, we saw what happened. What happens with Bomber is when he's on three bases, he goes into power mode and he produces so many units. He's a very barracks heavy player. So you can expect to see 10 to maybe 15 Marines at a time. Yeah. Medivac support, siege tanks when he needs them. And if you can't harass, 
after that big kind of all in plane, you've got to go back to this economic play. What's going to happen is he's going to take those Marines and he's going to drop them on you over and over and over again until you have to give up. He's going to stretch you across as much as he possibly can. Yeah, that's right. And we saw that. He, you know, dropped to the main base, brought Slivko back and then moved his army. It was always... Whenever we see bomber attack, it's always a conjunction of two movements at one. Yeah. So it's you know one drop and then the army movement forward on the other side of the map. And it's the right way to play. It's the right way to catch a Zerg off balance when they're not quite prepared. Because if you focus on just one, for example, if we take away the drop and then just throw everything in one attack, it's very easy for the fungals to hit for Absolutely. everything. If you pull them out of position, you're able to get into better positions for your tanks to be sieged up and to use the mobility and also the high ground as we saw Bomber use on that map. And well, he looked pretty good. Yeah, it worked very, very well for him. I feel that the siege tank positioning was excellent. Good target fire as well. And Honestly, w when it comes down to fungal growth, it's really a case of it's an AoE spell just like any other. Yeah. And generally speaking, AoE is more effective when you have a larger clump of units. It's very easy to spread your units if you don't have that many of them. You're just sending these small forces forward. And we didn't see that many great fungals there from Slivko. He needed them, and he didn't manage to land them. He's getting maybe four or five Marines at a time, sometimes not even able to chain, so the medevacs were able to heal them back up again. So yeah. it, was, it was not a great defense there for Slivko at all, and Bomber executed that pretty much as well as anyone could have expected. Yeah, I mean, I like the attempt from Slivko of from playing from behind. He's like, well, if I could just catch one army really cost efficiently, I can get back in the game, which is why we, he decided to go for Borrowed Bailings. Uh, borrowed Bailings, of course, so cost effective. Two Bailings de could detonate onto 20 Marines, all are going to die. Uh, and if that had happened, he would have been able to get a bit of breathing room to take a fourth base to actually get everything nailed down. And unfortunately, Bomber didn't allow that to happen no. and was able to pick up map number one of this best of three in winners round one. And this is a tough bracket. Uh, sitting in the winner bracket round four of this segment of the bracket is Crank, who's up there waiting for these players to duke it out to decide who he's going to go up against. Uh, the next map is going to be Daybreak as we're just about loading in. And to be honest, I think Bomber's going to like this map again. Yeah, he really doesn't mind so much. A lot of people say, oh, it's Daybreak. That's going to be fantastic for the Zerg, right? Well, but the thing is that Bomber's just so macro-focused. This is a wonderful map for him. And yeah. it also gives him all sorts of opportunities to gain great positioning, to get the drops where he needs to, and to do these two, maybe three-pronged attacks. Really just power out those units.